Yeah, the stand is a little bit taller today. Can you see me? Uh, no? All right. Well, it's not good evening. I'll be here tonight too, but now good afternoon, or not even that. Oh, yes, it is afternoon. It is p.m. now. So this funny block before lunch has been a part of Evolve for seven years. In the past six years, we always touched in a visionary way a very significant topic and they were topics that later on were gra groundbreaking for HR. It was artificial intelligence, global mobility of workforce, aging of employees, how to govern hybrid teams from distance and so on. This presentation this year is actually unique compared to last year's presentations because within two years we expect the democracy to collapse and therefore we decided to say bye to this unsuccessful popular experiment by enjoying the last possibility to enjoy the benefits that it brought us and we wanted to give you the space for you yourself to vote on which topic you consider the most burning one what you want to talk about this year in this block so maybe you haven't heard about this poll it was because we wanted to prevent cyber attacks that's why we did an offline uh, voting and it was a secret one so downstairs in the third cabin of female toilets you had the chance to use your key and scrape uh, a line next to your proposals. We were quite surprised by the results because we thought we would discuss topics like ever-growing uh, emptiness of work in corporations or unhuman, inhuman conditions uh, for workforce from developing countries or why did I study for five years at university in order to chase people at LinkedIn now? However, we discovered that the most burning topic for you was the backache Backache, the silent killer of office workers, that was the winning topic by far. And that's why we and our colleagues from FITGI prepared our workshop on the back. Who was there? <laughs> And also, well, this presentation is for you. And we also prepared this presentation which will help you understand backache, the history, the context, and also what is the, there for the office worker, what kind of hope is there. In order to try to understand where backache actually came from, we have to go back 3.5 billion years back, because that was the time that was needed to change from prebiotic soup uh, and to get a human body. It took 3.5 billion years. You might think it's a long enough time to pimp up a product to become uh, all perfect, but talk to women who are until now not able to pee standing. Or tell this to a person who wanted to move a washing machine five centimeters towards the wall and now it's been the person has been moving as C-3PO for from Star Wars due to the backache. But the fatal, the most fatal failure in our development has been the back. At the beginning, life on Earth has been developing in a very promising way. There were invertebrates governing the life on Earth, and they have been enjoying the life to its fullest potential. The cnidarians were knighting, box jellyfish were boxing, silent airs were silencing, and they were swimming through the old oceans in one harmonic biotope. Um, Freedom, unity, no vertebrae. But this idyllic, idyllical state had to stop 530 million years ago when the biggest failure actually in evolution occurred. It was the beginning of the spine and it actually caused the development of the new life. Those were the chordates. They were always grumpy and in tension, like a cord. The natural selection probably thought that if the body gets a supporting frame, then the body will be able to support itself in life. However, when from the prehistoric beaches, the funny, in life enjoying, uh, crustaceous were leaving and they were replaced by these monsters with um, popped up discs from with back aches and they stopped enjoying life while also the air got worse. We all understood or everybody understood that 
Nature would have been better if it was invertebrate. However, it was too late. The evolution turned its back on us. This was an unfortunate development with unthought for consequences. The whole fauna turned into a bundle of, instead of a bundle of joy, we had a bundle of pain which has been called Magnus Dorsus Regressus, translated as the big back vertebra. This is also the name of the organisms that feel the pain the most, the vertebrae, the vertebrates. Of course, the biggest of them were suffering the most because their spine were, was longer, longer than HR conferences. For example, a brontosaurus had a 30 meter long uh, spine. It is like 50 human bodies lying on the back. When this person got a backache, it was like 10 people hurting. And so if nature actually put this in your destiny, then no wonder that one day you wake up and you say, screw that, and I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to extinct, extinct. The mammals were smaller and therefore they managed to live until today because their spine was a little bit smaller. Unfortunately, one mammal was more bold than others and one day it decided not to stay on ground and stood up on the back feet. Their hand got free to create tools and to masturbate and it erected a 40-story tower which 80% of their children uh, endowed with suffering. Women were forced to make their pelvis more contact so that it supported the vertical body even though the the head of the newborn were getting bigger. The birth, which in the past was uh, free and simple, and it was basically comparable to pooping, turned into a several-hour horror show during which you are trying to push a melon-sized object through a lemon-sized hole. And not only the back is very impractical and causes a lot of pain, if you own a back, it also increases your chance to become enslaved, which happened to the horses, for example. If the horse was just ahead and the butt right away, yeah, not only it would have been more compact, more aerodynamic, but also the person would be falling off of the horse. So, therefore, the a human would never put a saddle on them. These beautiful creatures would be still running on the plains freely. This also um, considers the people without back. Tens of thousands of Egyptian slaves didn't have to suffer building pyramids. They could be just lying on the belly somewhere nearby. However, now it looks like the better times are dawning. Until now, the human person was a victim of evolution and had to accept the back just like uh, we weasels in your engine or hemorrhoids or death or Yaromir Sokup. Those are all things you have to accept. Well, now with the development of robotics and biotechnology, the back topic is still or again on the table. There are initiatives that believe that by 2050, after 350,000 years, we will be able to turn over and turn the back to the back and release the person from this damnation. And now we have a research um, team from the Stanford University from mechatronic uh, research and they named themselves I won't be back, which you cannot translate. It's a wordplay, which yeah you can also translate as I won't be um, back, like a, you know the back of your back. So now during Humatech, this team from Stanford introduced the first person without a back. It was a 23-year Canadian Michelle Bone, who suffered from terrible chronic back ache since the age of 13, where she reached when she reached. Um, 
behind her bed to get a dead hamster. The most difficult problem for us was how to get rid of the bag and at the same time keep the buttocks, which actually is quite adjacent and, on the other hand, is the most popular part of our body compared to the bag. Joseph Spine explained that to us. And on the other hand, by the way, the second was clitoris and the third was eyes in the competition of what is the most popular part of the body. After long research, we decided to keep the pelvis and to put intelligent mechatronic uh, lever so that uh, the vertebrae lean right on it and the person can move her back. So we cannot say that Michelle does not have uh, the backbone yet completely, but we're very close. She says, I'm still getting used to that, but I would like to thank the whole team. I think I was, I was damn lucky. And to conclude, I would like to summarize your topic that was second in the place. It was ever-limited uh, ability to focus on your work. In the morning, at experience stage, Matyáš Rezek and Petr Mara had a presentation about Mac as a choice, where they were trying to convince us that we, if we all switch to Apple, everything will be just good. Uh, groovy, but that doesn't solve everything either, not our problem, because the way you are able to pay attention is not only co connected to the hardware and software in front of you, but to the one behind your eyes. The technological enthusiast of human sexuality Petr Hara knows a lot about that. He discovered that one of the main reasons that are the cause of our escalated problems with attention is the fact that uh, one, we are always one click away from our most secret fantasy on the devices that we also work uh, use for working, such as uh, Alice in the Dildo Land or, or Bob and um, Beaver. Everything you can find that. So so the devices that we use for work for eight hours a day contain this as well, just one click away. So no wonder that our brains lose this war. In the past, the borders were clear. You work in the company and you fuck at home in the bed. But the 20th century employee um, always knew in which concept they are, whether they're being fucked by their boss or by their wife. That employee knew the difference between uh, fucked up work and uh, fucking at work. And nowadays we do everything in one monitor where we spend the whole day sitting in front of. Sometimes we're working on the worksheet, sometimes on, uh, sometimes we handle the shopping list and sometimes our penis. So the brain never knows what's going on. They don't know whether you're going to download a movie, uh, whether, whether you... <laughs> <laughs> you'll pull a movie from the computer or your foreskin. So your brain doesn't know what to do. It keeps hitting all the switches and we are unable to focus for five minutes. So this confusion was not present during our history. It's like as if in Middle Ages you wanted them to mow your lawn and you would give the people uh, <laughs> people tools with dildos. They wouldn't know what to do either. But if the employer gives you a notebook, they give you exactly that. It's a... Uh, it's exactly this dildo sickle. But Petr Hara doesn't stop with this topic. He also wants to uh, do a practical move against or to support human attention. We're trying to change the legislation so that pornography is only available on one brand of devices. From 2028, you should not be able to access porn from any other device. The reason why is this, because the situation where we are is unbearable. Imagine that you want to read uh, Pride and Prejudice, which you have always wanted to read, but it's just one click away from Jane Austen. Uh, or Jane Austen talking about the manners of uh, old England is just one click away from uh, a famous actress being um, loaded by a group of black people. So how far would you read? The fact that we have porn books and magazines away and separated 
There is a reason for that. If we want to stop the degradation of our uh, human dynasty, we need to focus on this. The biggest tech players are entering this field. The first range of these devices, which will also have an inbuilt tank for coconut oil and um, wet napkins built to the side, will have this name. Thank you for your attention.